Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, yes, Lord. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. Greetings, everyone, and welcome, welcome to the voice of God is everything. We want to welcome you on tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you so much for your patience, and we thank you tonight, amen, for coming back and sharing and in, and sharing on your platforms in Jesus' name. Truly, this is when you know the reign of word that God is about to birth on the platforms on tonight. Hallelujah. But nothing can stop the word of God, God from going forth. The word of God shall go forth in power and glory and in honor in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you all so much for coming and sharing. There you go. Come on. We need some intercessors to pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name to uplift the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've already had prayer. People have got on the con to hold up the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. But I bring before you once again, prophetess Tabitha in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A mighty, powerful woman of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord God. We love the Lord Jesus Christ and we lift him on high on tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord God. God, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Hallelujah in Jesus' mighty name. Tonight, for you are truly worthy of honor. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Thank you tonight. Yes, Lord, thank you. Yes, Lord, thank you tonight. Amen. So I present to some and present to others. Prophet is Tabitha Pittman in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Glory to God. Thank you so much, Prophet Sylvia. It is an honor and a privilege to share the stage with these powerhouse women. Hallelujah. I thank God for the cultivators ministry that is reaching the nations for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are going to get right into it because God is doing a new thing in this season. I want you to be prepared and you can't be prepared if you can't hear his voice in this season. Hallelujah. It's a new season. It's a new day and it's your time to do what thus saith the Lord for your life. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I had to I had to go into some warfare. You see, because when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will lift up a standard against them. We are the standard. Baby, you the standard. You the standard. Y'all y'all gotta know something. God is not playing with the enemy. He is Pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Y'all better get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah, because it's your time. It's your time. I want to let you know tonight. Yes, Lord. The Holy Spirit says, Lord, now, baby girl. <laughs> yeah, God. That God wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. Not just any relationship. Oh, oh Prophet Sylvia, are you there? Hallelujah. Amen. The connection. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. If we can, I'm go to the second speaker. Amen. Glory to God, just so we can keep the word of the Lord flowing. And amen. Possibly the speaker can work on her connection in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We're going to go. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, people of God. We give God the praise and the glory. Come on, keep praying in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I'm going to go to, amen, Elder Tori. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Reba Baba Shakatande de Debo Sande de Bekai. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on, people of God. Yes, Lord Father. In Jesus' name, I let your word flow tonight. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to introduce woman of God. Amen. Elder Tori. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. We had some connection, but 
God be the glory. They, amen. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, in spite of the warfare that's here, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We got another, another speaker of connection. Elder Tori, we're going to have to move forward, woman of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, my God. We Holy Spirit. We love you tonight. Her Father God. Hallelujah, glory to God, amen. Let me introduce to you Elder Tori Munson, a woman, amen, that way, amen, has a great testimony for millions of people. She is a mother, wife, author, and life coach, motivational speaker. She's an educator, she's an entrepreneur. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord God. She's a trans. My God, my God, she's a world changer in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, it says, amen, a few ways to describe her. That's a few ways to describe her. All her life, she was involved in the church as an ordained elder. Hallelujah. Tori, she's a co-pastor, a church with her husband. She was a co-pastor with her ex-husband. As a president of Priceless Gems, Hallelujah, women's ministry, she facilitated summits. Amen. To empower women to be who God has created them to be. Hallelujah. And also, amen, assisted to walk in their destiny. Hallelujah. She's, <coughs> pardon me. Amen. Glory to God. A seasoned pastor in her life. Amen. Where she encountered a death walk. Glory to God. Through this life challenge, Tori never turned her back on God. Due to sorting through life challenges, she indeed left the church. However, she always kept a great relationship with God. As this one particular season passed in her life, she also, amen, realized that there is a great calling from God on her life. So I present to some and present to others, none other than Elder Tori Munson. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you. Glory to your name, oh God. We ask, oh Father, that you block any interference in the airways right now. We plead the blood of Jesus right now. Oh, show them that I both so glory to your name, oh God. I just want to thank you, Prophet Sylvia, for inviting me onto your platform. I give God the glory and the honor. I am humbled. I thank God for what He is doing in you. Glory to God. I'm going to jump right in. So I want to tell you the importance of hearing God's voice. Sometimes we don't understand the importance of hearing God's voice. Sometimes we don't really, sometimes it's like we can't really uh, uh, put our finger on it. When you don't talk to God, when you don't speak to God, you will not know his voice. You would not know the sound of his voice. The only way you will get to know the father's voice is getting into the faith of God. The only way you would know the sound of the voice, oh, sure. the voice of the God is to seek his face. Seek his face daily. He will begin to speak to you. He will begin to tell you things. He will begin to tell you mysteries of his word. He will begin to tell you what is yet to come. He will begin to tell you what is now. Oh, Shoko. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. So I want to break down to you a couple of points here about hearing the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord in scripture is linked to the sound of a trumpet. That's where the purpose for sounding the trumpet, and this was what in the old days, in the old times, in the Old Testament, when the Lord was about to speak the trumpet, oh, kosha, what sound on the Nabosia? And today, it is the prophetic voice that we hear the prophetic voice when God speaks to you it is his voice it is the prophets that God uses in this time that comes forth that gives the word that tells you what is yet to come so we have got to make sure that we ask God to incline our ears so that we can hear his voice oh but I see 
Father, open up my ear gates so I can hear you clearly. The first point I want to make right now is the voice of the Lord gathers the people together. Oh, sure. The voice of the Lord gathers the people together. The voice of the Lord gathers. Okay, in Exodus 19 and 13, the word of the Lord says, when the trumpet sound long, they shall come near the mountain. In that scripture, it was talking about an special event where God was revealing himself. God was showing himself. I want to tell you now, when God speaks to you, when his voice sounds, when you can hear his voice, listen, he will wake you up in the midnight hour to a special time with him, a special presence with him. There is something that he has got to get to you. He gathers the people together. He gathers his saints together so that he can pour into them. He can show them what is yet to come. It is important that we hear the voice of the Lord. The second point I want to make today is the voice of the Lord alerts the people of war. God is going to show his people what is yet to come. God is going to tell his people what is before them. He's going to tell his people what is yet to come. I think about what we're going through right now. Oh my God. He caught up. I see God warned me and he showed me what was about to come. The scripture judges three. I see 327 and 28. People think you're crazy when God show and reveal some things to you. Baby, because you are here Hearing from him, you don't blend in with the rest of everybody. You are set aside, you are separate, you are different. There is something about you, you are peculiar, you are sanctified. He all show, oh God, Judges 3 27 and 28. It says, And it happened when he arrived that he blew the trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim. And the children of Israel went down with him from the mountain and he led them. Then he said to them, follow me for the Lord has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. Oh, Korabasianda. Did you hear that? Oh, Shanda. Because he heard the voice of God, he blew the trumpet. When God advised him to, he ended up also and God delivered them. In, oh, Shanda, in this text, we see that Ephod led the tribe of Ephraim into the battle against the Moabites. I got to calm down because I get too excited. And God used him to turn 18 years, hear me, to 18 years of slavery into the respite of eight years of peace because he moved and listened to the voice of God. God used him to turn 18 years of slavery into a respite of eight years of peace. Let me tell you what God would do with you if you hearken unto his voice. <laughs> we not only see how God directed the course of history, but was also involved in the small details. See, sometimes we miss God because, see, we're looking for something big. We're looking for God to move in this great, big old way. Listen right here. It was significant that Eho was left-handed. Listen to me. He was left-handed. He it kept the sword. Oh, sha. He kept the sword in his right hand. Thigh. He was left-handed. He all showed up by Sia, but he kept the sword at his right thigh. Listen, he caught up by Sia, safe from detecting because no one would have expected a sword to be hidden there. We tend, Hannah Moshia, to look for the evidence of God at work in major events and big things, explosive things. We look for God to do something big all the time when God is 
saying I'm going to do something small that's going to equate to something big. Listen, we fail to notice how the little things fit to make major events possible. We got to understand, hallelujah, that we got to keep our eyes open for how God, orders, mirror details before he orders minor details before he provides deliverance. We have got to understand that we can miss God if we're always looking for something big to be loud, to be right in our face. We got to understand that God will speak to you in your ear. He will send a little mumbling but oh, she ended up on see It could be something so small and minute, but if you are set on something in the natural that seems big, you will miss the voice of God. You will miss how he's moving in that set time. He took something so small, being that he was left-handed, he hid the sword in the right hand. He also, the enemy didn't see him coming. You better listen to the voice of God and how he tell you to move in this season. The last point I want to make today, the voice of the Lord lifts up the soul it brings encouragement and strength for battle. How many times you know that when you're about to go through something, you seem weak, you seem down, you may get down and weary, you may up, get depressed a little bit. If I get somebody that can tell the truth on here right now, you ain't always up high, you ain't always up on the top of the mountain. There are some low points in your life. There are some valleys that you hit sometimes, but if you listen to the voice of God, if you keep your ear inclined to his voice, he's going to give you strength. He's going to send help your way. He's going to encourage you. In Judges 7 and 18, the word of God says, when I blow the trumpet, here we go, we're blowing a trumpet again when God speaks. <laughs> when I blow the trumpet, I hope, Oh, and who is all with me? Then you also blow the trumpet on every side of the whole camp <laughs> and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Let me break this down to you real quick. See, I love this right here. I love Gideon got a boost of encouragement. If you know this story, he got a boost of encouragement. He was down, but he got a boost of encouragement because he heard the voice of the Lord. He, oh my God, he got peaceful because he heard the voice of the Lord and he began to worship God. He began to thank God. He began to praise him and give over to him. He began to magnify his name. How many times in your life have you gone through a dry, a dead season, a low season? And listen, you don't hear anything. But when you hear the voice of the Lord, it comes and it gives you peace. It gives you stability. Okay, listen to Gideon. So when Gideon heard the voice of the Lord, he began to worship him. And not only did he begin to worship him, but he began to gain his strength. His chest began to puff out because he heard his Savior speak to him. His chest poked out. He got his stamina back. He girded himself up. He all shot on and what he did, he took the 300 men that he had. He took the 300 men. He didn't gang some with him now. He didn't put on his big man draws now. He gained some with. And he told the 300 men, I'm going to break y'all up into three different groups. 100 here. 100 here and 100 here. That equals 300. Uh huh. He took the 300 men in Abo Siki under Abo So and he ordered them to circle around the camp. And when they did it, it was nighttime. See, God gave him some wisdom, some insight on what to do. When you listen to the voice of God, he will speak to you and tell you what to do. He will speak to you and tell you how to move. And not only did he tells you how to move, but he tells you when to move, at what hour, at what time. He tells you 
when to move. He tells you how to move. Oh, Posh, you don't have to question. You don't have to wonder. You got to consult your father. You got to hear the voice of God. So he commanded the men. 300. One, two, three. He said, I need you guys to circle around this camp at, at nighttime. And so when they circled around the camp, what they did was they blew the trumpet. He called out, bah, 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 see they began to blow the trumpet and shout a sword for the Lord. Ha, glory. I'm for Gideon. Oh my God. The Midianites, when they got up, they started on Abashia. They were startled in their sleep. They were startled from the noise, the praise, the trumpets. He called Abashia. The trumpet sounding, the worship going forth. They were scared. He called Abashia. And they assumed that they had been overrun by a superior force. Well, let me tell you, baby, let me help you out. It was a superior Superior force. Don't you know that when your head is against the wall and your back is against the wall, that your God will fight for you? Don't you know, Ikorabasia, if you go to God, he said, vengeance is mine. Don't you know that you don't got to fight those battles by yourself when it looks like you're not going to win? God said you shall win. Come on here. And so what I want you to know then, they was assumed that it was a superior force, which it was. God, he called Abasia, created so much confusion in their camp. He created so much confusion amongst the enemy that they began to fight each other. They began to fight each other until they were defeated. And not only was they defeated, they weren't just defeated, but their leaders, their leaders were executed. Their leaders Leaders were executed, ha, huh? not just the men, huh? but their leaders, he called Abbasia. Let me tell you, God will fight for you. God calls us to follow his agenda, not ours. We are called to follow the Lord's agenda, not ours, he called Abbasia. Even when it doesn't look like, even when it doesn't make sense, we have got to make sure that our ear is inclined to the Father. Listen, when all this stuff was going on before the pandemic broke out, before all this shift came, before all this stuff came into this world today, I was telling people what God had showed me. I didn't have very little detail, he could have all shot, but I knew in my spirit that something was shifting. I began to talk to people and they thought I was crazy. I began to tell them and they thought, oh, show They thought I was crazy. They thought I was messed up. They didn't understand. Oh, God, you just talking. Uh, that's like, we're going to be all right. We're going to be fine. Uh -uh, that ain't so. Let me tell you what is about to take place. So listen. Even when it don't make sense, you stand on what God told you to do. Even if it doesn't look right in the natural, you stand on what God told you to do. He wants you to watch and see what he can do in response to your obedience and your faith. Your faith and your obedience. Come on here. God is not a simple God. He don't, oh, listen, he don't give you simple things. He's going to give you something complicated that's going to look like it don't make sense, like it's not going to happen. So when people tell you that you're not going to have that business because you don't got a check in account, tell them, uh, that ain't what my God said. Come on here. When people tell, say that you wasn't going to make it, that you was going to stay exactly where you are, and you know that you heard the voice of God tell you what he had promised you, don't listen to them. You stay right where God has you. Be faithful to God. Listen to what he is telling you to do. Oh, show God up, I see you. Because when God is ready to move, it doesn't matter how big your enemy is. It doesn't matter how big your situation is. It does not matter because God is God. God is God all by himself. He don't need no help from nobody. What it is, baby, is what it is. The Midianites were shattered by the power of God, working through the people of God in the midst of darkness, in the midst of the dark circumstance. What I want 
want you to know now it may not look like it's gonna work out it may not it may look complicated it may not look like you're gonna get what you're supposed to get it may not look like oh shit the bank gonna give you a loan oh shoot it may not look like it but let me tell you something god is god all by himself he's waiting on his children to get to the end of their seat and believe god for the unspeakable believe god for the unbelievable believe god for the supernatural he said i want you to put a demand on me i want you to have a spirit of expectation for what i can do we go to in a dark situation so i want the church to take notice today that even if we don't understand the things and the thing of odds are against us god has called us to do it individually and collectively and watch them work so let me tell you this i got five minutes left listen 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 five minutes five minutes is what i got left we're going through a pandemic right now right it doesn't look like it's gonna be good it looks like what it is the antichrist agenda has been pushed forth the antichrist agenda has been pushed forth but i declare and declare today that god takes care of his people he will not allow his people to be destroyed let me tell you right now god said i want to see how much faith you have in me i want to see if you will leave or forsake me i want to see if you're serving me for real i want to see if you're going to turn to the other gods if you're going to turn to this worldly mess if you're going to blend in with the rest let me see if you can stand persecution let me see if you can stand when the odds are against us let me see oh shokot god said that my remnant is rising up all over the world i was in bed and he woke me up a couple of nights ago and he said he could have i see it's in my phone i can't even get it now he said he could have i saw could have i see this is what he told me really quick i got four minutes okay he he just dropped it in my spirit he said the remnant of shataraboso he said global shakers he said my remnant is rising up all over the globe don't be worried don't be worried they're rising up all over the globe and they are shaking things up in prayer it may not look like it but the remnant is rising they cannot not be silent they are rising up in prayer just like they got witches with hexes and sorcerers and all these seances god said that my remnant is rising up and they're shaking things up in the earth he said they're shaking things up in the earth he said the sound i need to hear the sound of my people so listen even in a dark situation huh? it look like it's dark right now it look like it's dark right now it don't think like oh, but I see ya. things are going to get better god said he could have see ya. he is here he would never leave nor forsake us huh? it is time for you Holy Ghost, it is time for you to make sure that you are in your prayer closet. He said it is time for you to stay on your face. It is time for you to push back the plate, push back the things that you like. It is time for you to get into a place of worship where you can hear me, where you can hear my voice, where you can see what I'm saying, where you can see what my next move is he called up I see under the boat so it's gonna get real tight y'all he called up I see key under the boat go shot it's gonna get real tight hallelujah but it's gonna be right he called up I see ya God is washing and purifying he called the double under the boat go she and he's still going to bless his people he's still going to bless his people they oh my god we have a shout of victory victory he called up I see ya is our name he owned the double seat called up victory is our name 
I want to encourage you as I come off of here to keep your faith locked in on God. Keep your mind locked in on God. Do not be swayed. Do not be persuaded. Listen to what I'm telling you. Listen, you got to guard your ear gate and your eyes. You have got to guard them with everything that you have. You have got to gird up with the help. You got to put on your full armor. Because the only thing that's going to keep you in this hour is your relationship with the Father. It is important that you hear the voice of the Lord. It is important so you would know what to do, when to do it, how to move, when to speak, when to be quiet, what to say, and not for nothing. You have a whole family that you have got to be listening and hearing God's voice to know how to move in your household. Do you understand? Hallelujah. But his people is rising up. This is a season where his people shall be blessed. But you have got to keep your ear locked onto his voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woman of God, I'm not too sure if you want me to. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. My God, my God, people of God, what a word. Thank you so much, Elder Tori Munson. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for the word of the Lord. The voice of God is everything, people of God. Hallelujah. I pray. And so in the name of Jesus, we're going to keep it flowing tonight. In Jesus, I want to bring forth my next speaker, Prophet is Tabitha. His name we're going to try it once again. Prophet is Tabitha Pittman is a certified amen life relationship coach from Michigan, USA. She is the author of Magnetic Woman Devotion 21 Days to Regain Your Power. Amen. A devout Christian of faith. She has long dedicated her life to motivating people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. To seek God's truth and pursue their life passion. Jesus. She is the CEO of Coaching and Consulting LLC, an avenue through which she continues to encourage and empower. Amen. Hallelujah. Others to build a life. Amen. Their best lives. Embracing her excellence. She also serves as a full-time mother, a wife who loves spending quality time with her family, reading and enjoy cooking and baking Southern favorites. Once again, I introduce to some and present to others none other than private Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless God. Ooh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Prophetess Tori. Woo! My God. Look, I was stirred up in my seat. Can you hear me okay? Is this better? My God, my God, my God. <laughs> what a right now word. <laughs> Jesus. Ooh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I thank God that yes. he will give you time. Hallelujah. Time. Well, he will give you time to take your time. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Prophetess Tori was talking about going before Gideon. God went before him and he made him a mighty, mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. 
You see, that came from having a relationship. You know, everything happens on purpose and with purpose when you're listening to God. You know that? Let me tell y'all something. We, we had an order of service, but the Holy Spirit disrupted the order of service. See, the enemy thought that he would come in, but God raised up a standard against it. No way, devil, you a lie. You can't have this broadcast. There are souls that must be saved. There are people listening and waiting for a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going to read from 1 Samuel 3 verses 1 through 10. But I want to let you know that God longs to have a personal relationship with you. He wants to spend time with you every day. You see, the prophetess Tori was saying, well, what we need is to have a relationship. That's what she said. Gideon had a relationship. And when he had that relationship, God was able to morph him and give him wisdom and wise counsel. God was able to give him a strategy to win. Okay, come on, y'all. And God wants to have a relationship so that you can win. The way that we win, the way that we formulate this relationship to win is that we must hear his voice. Hearing his voice is everything. Yes, Lord. You see, the Bible talks about the voice of the Lord is over the waters. Yes, Lord. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters in Psalms 29. Yes, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. You see, the voice of the Lord, he is powerful because he is omnipotent. He is omniscient and he is, yes, Lord sovereign. He can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it, y'all. Yes, if God's voice is so powerful, somebody might be asking, I'm glad you asked, sister. I'm glad you asked. So why do so few of us recognize it? Why do so few of us recognize it? If it's so powerful, if it's so loud, why don't we hear him? The Bible says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Yes, Lord, my sheep hear my voice. Aren't we all as Christians, his sheep? Okay, all right, y'all, come on with me. Come on with me. I know them. I know them. The Bible said, he said, I know them. He knows you. This speaks of a personal intimacy that he has with you because he knows you. They follow me. That's obedience, y'all. It takes a level of obedience to hear the voice of the Lord. Aren't we following our shepherd? Doesn't the shepherd leave the 99 and go after the one? Yes. God longs to have a personal relationship with you. How do I know that? Because of the story of Samuel. I know that because of the story of Samuel. It says, then the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Hallelujah. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at a time while Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out into the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, I want y'all to just put a pen right there because I'm going to come a circle back around to it, that the Lord called Samuel and he answered. He said, here am I. A lot of us want to give a here am I, but I need y'all to hear us clearly tonight. You see, there's a difference between hearing and listening. You see, hearing is what we do with our ears. Listening is what we do with our head. Ha! That's what you do with your brain, y'all. There's a difference. God wants to hear with your spiritual ears. He wants to process it through your spirit. Hallelujah. So that you're listening and hearing him. Hallelujah. Those things are working in tangents. And so he ran to Eli. He said, here am I for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went and he laid down. Verse six, he did the same thing, y'all. Verse seven says, now Samuel did not know the Lord yet nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time. A third time, y'all. You see, <laughs> prophet story, we in the vein tonight. I want to let you know we in the vein tonight. God, <laughs> we got one Holy Spirit, but he operates in all of us. Hallelujah. And she said there was 300. I'm telling you, God spoke to Samuel three times. Yes. Then he arose and went to Eli and said, 
here I am for you did call me. And he said, Eli perceived that the Lord had called him. See, Eli said, the boy don't know the voice of the Lord yet, but he's hearing him. Ha, huh? he thinks it's my voice. Yes. And therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at our other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered and he said, speak, Lord. Hey, yeah, get a little bit shot for your servant is listening. I want to let y'all know there's something I want you to take. If you're taking notes, this is a prime time to grab your crayons and your pencils. Grab your marker and your paper. Put it in your phone notes if you got to. Put it in the comments so somebody on the replay can catch it too. Yes, Lord. Samuel was hearing God's voice and didn't even know that it was the Lord. Some of y'all hearing God's voice, you're hearing the still small voice. Some of y'all hearing God's voice because you keep seeing a recurring theme. Some of y'all have seen the 777. You keep seeing the numbers. You keep seeing different things. You're hearing God's voice. He's trying to communicate with you. I heard somebody say that God is talking more than you listening. Ha, some of y'all is hearing him and you don't know it yet. Sometimes God speaks, but we need to realize that it's him. We got to realize that it's the Lord. Eli was lying down in his place of rest and he didn't hear God's voice. Eli was getting up in age and he didn't hear God's voice. Samuel lied down where the Ark of the Covenant was. Oh, Lord, I told you I was coming back to it. He was lying down where the Ark of the Covenant was. You see, that's where the presence of the Lord is. You see, when you go over to your prayer closet, that means you got to get on your knees. That means you got to make a comfortable place for the Lord. I don't care if you're sitting down. I don't care if you're kneeling down. I don't care if you're laying down. Hallelujah. But you got to get in the presence of the Lord because that's when you can hear God's voice. Yes, Lord, if we want to hear God's voice, we got to spend time in presence, y'all. We got to spend time in his presence. That requires that we worship. You see, worship is more than just a little so sweet song. It's, worse, it's more than just a, a, a slow tune that, that pricks your spirit. Yes, it's that, but it's so much more. It's adoration for everything that he's done. It's thankfulness and gratefulness. Hallelujah. You've got to worship him. You've got to worship him. You've got to worship him in spirit and in truth. I want y'all to worship him because when you worship him, yes, God, that's when the wisdom comes. When you worship him, that's when the stealth, the, the wisdom of stealth comes. It says, baby girl, here's your strategy, but you got to speak quietly. You got to move slowly. You got to do it my way because I'm going to give you this download. You ain't got to tell everybody what I told you, but do what I told you. Ha, Habakkuk 2, it says, <laughs> write the vision, make it plain, and then run with it. Yes, God. He was giving him instructions in worship. He was giving him a design and a plan in worship. Yes, God. We must have the heart of a servant, y'all, and a willingness to obey him when he speaks. Write the vision, make it plain, and run with it. Sometimes we got to steal away. When you steal away to your prayer closet, when you steal away to your private place, some of y'all, look, I'm going to tell y'all that God will speak to you in your car. Hmm. I, I, there, I used to go, you know, when we were going to work every day, I will say, Lord, I, what is that that I can hear you so clearly when I'm in the car? I'm driving down the road and God is talking. I done got a download about what was coming in my day. Yes, God, because he's speaking. He's speaking, y'all. So I want to give y'all some secrets of the, of the secret place of hearing God's voice. I want to just, again, take some notes, y'all. Spend time reading and meditating on the word of the Lord. Spend time reading. Why do you say that, Sister Tabitha? Well, see, because if you put the word of God in your spirit, mm -hmm, then you'll be able to tell his voice from another voice. Y'all heard me. I said, if you put his word in your spirit, 
you'll be able to tell his voice from another voice because God is going to speak to you in the word of the Lord. But see, if you ain't put it in, the Holy Spirit can't bring it back up to your remembrance. Okay. All right. This is the language of the Holy Spirit. The more familiar we become with the written word of the Lord. Yes. The more we recognize his voice. The more we recognize his voice, 90% of God's will for your life is in the word of God. Hallelujah. Ask God to speak to you. That's point number two. Ask him to speak to you. I'm telling you, the Bible says that if you want wisdom, ask God for it and he will give it to you freely. You got to ask. The, another scripture said, knock and the door will be open. Ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find you got to ask for it you got to come boldly to the throne of grace you got to know that you know that you know who jesus help me holy ghost you got to know that you know that you know that god is real he's on your side and he wants to speak to you because he's got a plan and a purpose for you hey to give you hope and a future yes lord hallelujah god's promise according to jeremiah 33 and 3 it says call to me and i will answer you yes and show you great and mighty things see that's what i love about god this this is how personal he is when you call to him see your knees is different than sister tabitha's knees prophetess sylvia got a knee prophetess tori got a knee prophetess rika got a knee but it's different than tabitha's knee it's different than the uh, nail is uh pinkney's knee it's different than your knee okay we all got different knees but god said call to me and I'll answer you. He said, call to me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There's a secret to spending time with God. There's a secret to hearing his voice. See, because he's going to show you things that you do not know. Yes, Latoya, he's going to show you things that you do not know. Yes, in the early church in Acts, believers heard God speaking all the time. Look, God ain't changed. He's the same God, according to Hebrews, yesterday, today, and forevermore. He ain't changed. My God is unchanging. Hallelujah. Yes. Point number three, learn to be quiet. Mm -mm. And listen in prayer. You see, communication is a two-way street. You see, if I gave you the, the, the business definition of communication, it would be that I'm speaking and you listening. And then you parry that thing back to me, right? And you tell me what I said. And the onus is on the person who is speaking to make sure that the person who is listening heard what you said. To make sure it's a two-way conversation. You want to hear from God as much as he wants to hear from you. And you want to wait. You've got to wait wait on the Lord. Wait, I say on the Lord. Sit down. Sit down. Some of y'all don't get quiet long enough. You see, some of y'all just come and, and just pour out on God and you don't wait for him to pour back out on you. And sometimes it ain't got to be, you know, a, a three hour session, but sometimes you got to make time for him. Sit there and wait. Come on, y'all. But you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward openly. Matthew 6 and 6. Part, point number four, y'all. Learn the ways that God speaks. I'm only going to give you a, four, a few of them, y'all. But learn the way God speaks. Psalms 119 says this, the primary ways that God speaks to us. The still small voice. Yes, Lord. He speaks in circumstances, open and closed doors, provision. Okay. I got a girlfriend and, and, and she was, she had been cultivating this thing with the Lord. She'd been cultivating saying, Lord, I want to provide a foster home for the children. Lord, I want to do this and I want to do that. And let me tell you, God began to make provision. He was speaking to her in provision. He began to send attorneys. He began to send grants. He sent some grant writers. He sent some friends in faith who said, sister, I believe in your vision and I'm going to push you forward. I'll be your Aaron and your her and hold your arms up so that you can make sure your dream comes to pass, so that you can make sure the children have. You see, God speaks in the provision. Okay, come on, y'all. That God will speak in the, in the prophets and the gifts of prophecy. Yes, Lord. He can speak in the audible voice. You know, it ain't that common, y'all, but it happens. It happens. The dreams and visions that you have. The Bible said, I speak once, yea, twice, 
in a dream. God is speaking to you in your dreams. Yeah, God, that's why you can't be listening to the, all that tomfoolery while you going to sleep. Turn that TV off. Turn some worship music on. Don't let anything play in your ear gates. Come on, y'all. Don't let everything come into your eye gates because you got to protect your ears and your eyes so that when God starts speaking, you can hear him. When he speaks in your dream, he speaks because guess what? In your dream, he ain't got to worry about the cares of the day. In your dream, he can he can push all that stuff away and give a download to your subconscious. Yes, Lord. Yeah, God speaks in the dreams. Yes, he speaks in angels and heavenly encounters. If you haven't taken the time to get Prophetess Sylvia's book, yes, Lord, talking about those angelic dreams and those prophetic dreams and those heavenly dream encounters, you need to run and get it. Yes, Lord. Get that because it's going to help you hear from the Lord. And then I need y'all, number five, to confess any sin. Ooh, ooh, Jesus. I don't know what my time is looking like, y'all. I ain't even set the time, but Holy Ghost, help me, Lord. Confess your sins. Confess your sins. If you want to hear from the Lord, you've got to confess your sins, baby. There ain't no two ways about that, see, because sin is going to cut you off from the Lord. Okay, everybody ain't gonna clap or give a man, put some hearts on the screen or, or, or phone a friend or share a broadcast when somebody say that you gotta confess your sins. You got to confess your sins. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, for the sins known and unknown. Hallelujah. Yes, God, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. See, we don't want nothing to separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. To start hearing this voice again, you got to go back and obey the last thing the Lord told you. I'll wait for it. Obey the last thing God told you. You see, some of y'all stuck. Some of y'all stuck. I get people in my coaching business all the time. They say, Sister Tabitha, I'm stuck. Big sis, I'm stuck. You stuck because you ain't obeyed God and did the last thing he told you disobedience will cause you not to hear from the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember, Jesus said, my sheep follow me. That means you obey him. You obey him. I want y'all to number six, practice hearing from the Lord. Practice hearing from the Lord. That means spend less time on the phone and more time on the phone with him. See, he's available 24-7, 365. The Bible said he neither sleeps nor slumbers. Hallelujah. Abide in me and I in you. That means you got to spend time cultivating that relationship. Cultivators, cultivate the relationship with the Lord. Yes, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. You've got to abide in the word of the Lord. Yes, God. And that way he can abide in you. You've got to soak in his presence. You've got to soak in his presence. Let me tell you, get you some worship music that ain't got no words, okay? Get you some soaking music so that you can abide in his presence. You can usher in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This is your set time. This is a Kairos moment. You see, because what's coming to the body of Christ in this day, in this season, in this hour is going to require that you have discernment. That discernment comes from hearing the voice of the Lord. Prophetess Sylvia is always right on time because let me tell you, this is a woman of God who spends time hearing the voice of of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is everything. It's a guiding light. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It's a compass. It's a leading presence in my life. And that's why we want to let you know that it's everything. It's everything to your walk in Christ. It's everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I yield the mic to Prophetess Sylvia. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who shake it a little bit. Shaka. You've got to hear the voice of the Lord. Yes, Lord.
Hallelujah. Amen. Please pardon me. Please pardon me. My apologies. Amen. Glory to God. Pardon me. I was on mute. I had to mute myself because I'm back here giving God a praise. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Prophet Tabitha. Amen. Pittman for the word of the Lord. Truly God's word. Amen. In Jesus' name. His voice validates his vision and for our lives. Amen. So we thank God tonight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And I'm going to continue to flow in the Holy Spirit tonight and let the third speaker come forward. In Jesus' name. As prophetess Rico Riley in Jesus' mighty name, several times, Amen. Glory to God. I I've met prophetess uh, Rico by Amen Facebook. Jesus' name. I just tapped in, Amen. Mighty woman of prayer and intercession, Amen. Glory to God. So I'm a lady, Amen. The Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, I'm a I'm a move so she can come forward, Amen. Rico Riley is a servant of God, a true creative teacher, author, and worship leader. Her God given purpose is to teach, train, and lead others into divine purpose and God encounters that bring about restoration of true intimacy with God, the fear of the Lord, transformation, truth, healing, deliverance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. She is the author of two books, Poor, a kingdom manual for developing a worship culture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. A room autonomy utilizing amen your god-given tools for kingdom advancement she is a, amen a prophetic minister amen joseph gardner she uh, excuse me please pardon me people of god she is a prophetic minister amen joseph gardner released a recent she and uh, joseph gardner released a recent spontaneous and prophetic music project called illustrations which is available on apple music and other musical platforms so i thank god tonight amen for prophet rico riley god bless you in jesus name Bless you, uh, woman of God. Thank you so much, uh, Prophetess Sylvia, for the invitation to be a part of um, this wonderful um, virtual conference. And um, I bless and honor the um, amazing, um, dynamic woman of God that had gone before me. Um, your messages have been so profound, and I believe all of us um, are in the the uh, vein definitely tonight on uh, what God is speaking as it relates to the voice of God is everything. And I'm good evening to each and every one of you that are watching um, in your respective places. And I just want to hit a couple of points. And then at the very end, um, I believe that uh, we should go into a time of prayer and intercession as it relates to uh, hearing the voice of the Lord. Amen. So I'm just going to come jump right into this. Um, and uh, the focus scripture has pretty much been uh, John chapter 10, verse 27. Um, but I believe that the secret, um, some of the secrets to understanding the voice of God uh, can be found earlier on in the chapter, chapter 10, verses one through four. And I'm going to hit those particular uh, passages of scripture at several angles and give you um, some uh, pretty good nuggets that I believe that will bless you. Um, um, and um, I believe they, they are pivotal in understanding and discovering the importance of God in our life as uh, believers, as those who love him, as those who serve him. So I'm going to come from John chapter 10, verse number one and two. I'm going to start off and it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. And then verse two says, but he that entered in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And the first point I want to give you tonight based off of these two verses is basically this, that the voice of God in your life will prove your legitimacy in him. It will prove your origin in the father. It will prove your origin in the kingdom things. What are you saying? You're probably asking that, that Jesus basically tells the Pharisees in this passage of scripture said, if you go any other way uh, through except through the door, you are a thief and a robber. And if you go down further study, you'll also discover that Jesus himself talks about how he is the door. And one of the things that I love to do when I'm studying is define words, because I believe words open up the definition and really the the heart of God as it relates to what a passage of scripture means. And he says that word thief is kleptis, which means one who possesses a mere outward profession, which means you have an outward profession, but you are defiled by the world. 
Okay. So, and then he said that word robber, that, that word robber or rob is listis, which means one who plunders openly by violence. But here's another uh, note I would like to add is that it reveals that it means that you decide for or against, which means that you, you decide or you judge and make a decision on the behalf of a people, which is a form of legalism. And so what we have and in, in what we've experienced in these last few years and even up into a place of where we are currently is that we've seen a lot of backdoor ministry, a lot of backdoor things happening outside of the realm of God, outside of the connection of Jesus himself. And so many have been influenced, not for the love of him, hallelujah, but they've been influenced by their ambition for a position. They've been influenced by their love for power, their wealth, their ease. They don't, they're not coming to promote the kingdom or the church, but they're there to promote their interests. You are a thief and a robber is what Jesus is stating. He said, many come up another way. And if you go any other way, it is a, it is a sign that you are illegitimate. But if you go by way of the father, if you go by way of the son, if you go by way of the Holy Spirit, the door, then you yourself you are it is evidence that you hear the voice of God. And so we we don't take our place when it comes to the things of God. We don't usurp our place. But what we take our place and our post by way of Jesus, he is the door. He is the only reason we hear what we hear. And any other conversation that is uh, against the conversation of the Lord or against what God has established in his scripture is me, it, you are a rightful thief and a robber. But see here's the, another thing. We must go through him in order to get to what is in him and what is attached to him. You cannot get to the church unless you get through Jesus the door. You cannot get to his sheep. You cannot get to the sheepfold unless you go by way of him. You cannot preach nor prophesy and teach in anywhere, shape or form unless you go through the door. And so one thing about the voice of God, it legitimizes your origin. It lets the world know that you have a foundation and that you go by way of a proper interest. And that interest is the voice of our father. And that it gives you the permission and the admission to speak, to declare, to prophesy, to teach, to do the works of the Lord, to perform the miraculous, the supernatural in the earth realm. And so our faith must be in him. Our profession must be of him and our authority must come from him. Hallelujah. And because that proves our legitimacy of the one who is over the sheepfold and that is Jesus himself. Come on. I'm determined. You and me ought to be determined. We ought to be determined to be the kind of person that I don't do it without his voice, that I don't do it without his spirit, that I don't do it apart from his presence, that I don't do it apart from his admission and permission, because to do it without him means that I violate my own legitimacy and that I can say that I'm a child of God all day long. But if I don't go by way of the door, I don't have access to the voice. I don't have access to the promise. I don't have a right to speak anything if my origin is not in the father because he is the door. Come on. The second point I want to bring to you is coming from verse three of John chapter 10. It says to him, the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. This scripture, I want to break this down. If you study what a porter is, a porter is basically a gatekeeper of the pens. So the pens were basically the end of the, the place where the sheep would be held overnight. So their shepherd would bring them to a pen. The pen would be assigned a porter. And that porter was basically the gate, the, the gatekeeper of those sheep. They determine who came in and who went out, what sheep went in, what sheep out. So often, times, even in times, even, uh, um, like today, uh, sheep that are held in a pen, sometimes multiple sheep, multiple herds that belong to different shepherds, which share the same pen. But in order for the, 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 the shepherd to take out a particular flock there, the shepherd had to call. And when you have been raised by the shepherd, my God, when the shepherd 
hallelujah, would call the sheep. The sheep would respond because they recognized the voice of the shepherd. They would not leave the pen unless there was a call from their specific shepherd. And so the, the Lord wants us to know is that the voice of the Lord will be proof that we, we, his sons and his daughters are under his care. Come on. And so you cannot hear, you cannot hear who, uh, uh, you cannot hear a voice you are not familiar with. You cannot follow a flock when you don't know, you you don't even have an association to the voice that's associated to that flock. God cannot recall who or what does not, or, or who or what not does not belong to him unless you've been under his care. If you've been under the care of the father, you'll recognize the father when he come. And what many do not know is that because if you do not know the voice of God, that means you've never been cared for because a true shepherd would never abandon his sheep. And so in order to recognize the voice of God, you got to understand that you have to be under his care. Hallelujah. Everybody does not belong to him. Come on, we are in the days and times where you cannot believe anymore what anybody says. But let me see the fruit. Let me see the manifestation. Let me see the demonstration. Where is the evidence that you are a part of the sheepfold? And it's because the voice of the Lord, the voice of the great shepherd, hallelujah, has cared for me and you. Come on, we are to do as 1 Peter 5, 7 says. And I want to break this down because I believe even now in a day and age, God is raising up people in this hour to bring back proper teaching to the scriptures. And when we look at 1 Peter 5, 7, it says that we are to cast all of our care upon him for he cares for us. I want to uh, draw your attention to a particular word that is in that passage of scripture. And it says to cast a care. And what we automatically associate a care with is with a worry, with an anxiety, with pain, with all types of uh issues and circumstances, but the Lord said, I want you to break down that word Rika, and I want you to give them exactly what that scripture means. That word to cast the care means that I am a willing to allow myself to be drawn to a different direction. And what is it that the, the shepherd often carries is a rod and a staff. He brings forth this correction and his direction. So when I cast the care, that means I cast all of my direction, all of what I think I should be all of where I think I want to go, all of where I, I feel like I need to be. And I put off my direction and I take upon the direction of the great shepherd. I take upon the direction of the one who speaks. I take upon the direction of the one who leads and guides me into all truth. It means that I release myself into the watchful care of a, oh God, I release myself into the watchful care of the one who has the capacity to cover me of the one who has the capacity to oh God, to watch over my life, to watch over my purpose, to watch over my destiny. It provides me with the opportunity to know that he oversees my life. When the voice of the Lord is over my life, he oversees every part. You ought to declare in the comments that he oversees my life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So even I want to bring to you this. Hallelujah. Most of our worries, most of our anxieties and fears, listen to this. Most of our worries, anxiety, and fears can automatically be traced back to a lack of direction. If you've ever played, faced a moment in your time when you was worried, where you was full of anxiety, where you fear it was because you did not know what to do. You did not know how to go about it. And here, I'm going to prove it to you. If you go to Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 through 6, here you see the story of Moses when he goes up to the mountain to speak to the Lord. And down there, while, all, while he's going up there, trying to get information and insight and revelation of the Lord to take back down to the children. They down there with everything and offering up and, and molding up golden gods. And God said, you need to go down there and get your people because they were in a state of duress because they got tired of waiting on Moses because they lacked direction. But little did they know that Moses was going up because he was conversing with the voice of the Lord and that their direction was found in his voice. And all he had to do was come back down to the mountain and get them to where they needed to be. You still don't believe me. Come on, you, you take a look even at 1 Samuel chapter 
Genesis 13 and you look at the story of Saul when, the, when Samuel decided to show up late and they begin to look out for Samuel. They're like, where's Samuel at? We don't know where he's at. We don't know what he's doing. And so the people begin to, to get angry. They get frustrated and due to fear and worry, Saul allowed them to offer up a sacrifice that was not sanctioned by him because they lacked direction in a moment of time when they needed to take the opportunity to heed the voice of the Lord and to wait on the voice. Come on, you got to learn how to wait on the voice of the Lord. You got to learn how to wait on what he says in the name of Jesus so that he can lead you. Come on, I'm moving. Come on, the voice of God. Come on, we'll confirm our history with him. Yes, Lord, the voice of God will confirm our history with the Father. Many of us, we, we don't struggle with wanting to hear. We really do want to hear the voice of God. But what happens is that we struggle not with hearing, but we struggle with recognition. Many of us have an issue because recognition can only by, come by way of relationship. You only can recognize a person. You can only recognize a voice if you've been in relationship with that person. And so recognition recognition of who God is, recognition of his voice will give you access to him to understand who he is. The word recognition means to recall the identity of a person or things previously known. When you are void of the voice of God, it can limit your history with him. What do you mean by that? Many of us, all we got is the capacity to repeat with many of our religious, uh, things that we've experienced. Many of us only know just uh, repeating the names of God. We don't know God to be a healer. We don't know God to be a comforter. We don't know God to be a restorer. We don't know God to be a repairer of the breach. We don't know these things. We just hear it by uh, by way of information or by way of someone sharing what they've experienced. But God is saying, I don't want you to just know me by way of just the names that I carry, but I really want you to come into the fullness of my attributes, the fullness of my nature and my character. I don't want you to just repeat what you heard, but I want you to be able to recognize my spirit. When I show up on the scene, many of us can repeat what we heard, but we can never truly recall who God is. Come on. You want proof of that? I got proof of that. Acts chapter 19. When you go and study about the sons of Sceva, you see that the sons, all they knew was to repeat information. They thought they could show up on the scene and cast the demon out of a boy. But what little they realize is that you can you can recount all the names you can go down the line and speak all the different names of God all you want but one thing you've got to understand that if you don't have relationship with the name you cannot speak it and it will not work from you come on in the name of Jesus come on I got another one for you first Samuel you go to first Samuel 28 even Saul after he lost his kingship even after he lost his throne and he right right before he was about to die he was desperate. He was longing for God to speak to him. But the word, but the voice of God was made known to him. He no longer heard the voice of the Lord. He had the nerve to go to a witch outside of town to try to seek out the voice of the Lord. And little did he know that even when she tried to call, conjure up a spirit, even the familiar spirit said, I don't even want to talk to you. And by the way, you're about to die in a couple of days. Come on, hallelujah. It's not enough to just know God. From a based off of somebody else relationship, you ought to know God by relationship. And I believe the other woman of God spoke tonight and talked about the importance of intimacy with the Father. Come on, we are in the days where your intimacy will prove you, your relationship with Him will prove you. In the name of Jesus, come on, Hallelujah! Come on, even how God created us and designed us. Come on. Oh, yes, God. We got to understand that even the creative design, God made us. Hallelujah. He created us to, to check this out. There was there's a memory function in our brains where he created complementary processes. And one of those processes is he gave us the capacity to learn something new. And then the second one is that he gave us the ability to recall things that happen or transpire. And so let me relate this back to altars and even to the point that I made is that the altars, there were many times in scripture, if you study, is that throughout scripture, God would command particular individuals to create altars. And the purpose for those altars 
was to teach them a lesson and to create a memorial that they can associate with the name or attribute or the nature of God that occurred in that time and season. Come on, altars were places of worship. There were places of testimony. There were places of communion, communication with the Father. So there is a difference between those of us that worship. We got worship down. We think it's associated with music. We got that down. We think we think your worship is just limited to just music. We think it's just limited, but but there comes a time when you got to do more than just sing a song and lift your hands. But what about when you got to commune with Him? Worship and communion is different because communion means that I have to listen and get instruction. I have to listen and gain information by way of the voice of the Lord. So where is your history with Him? What are those altars in your life? What are those moments where He has spoken to you? What have He caused you to build? Oh God, as a memorial of his goodness. Come on, I believe that we are coming in the days where we're going to need to revisit those areas in the days to come. Come on, you're going to have to revisit those prophetic words. You're going to have to revisit those times when he delivered you and set you free. Come on, you got to get your history up. Come on, type that in the comments. Get your history up with God. Come on, in the name of Jesus, because even in these days to come, you're going to need to have more than a sukkahmahaya tongue. You're going to need to have more than the fact that you connected with a certain leader. You're going to need to have history with him because history is going to give you the ability to recall and to remember that if God manifested himself in that nature by way of his voice, he's going to do it again. Come on, with the name of Jesus. Come on, I'm moving. I'm moving. I got like 10 more minutes left. Hallelujah. Come on. Uh, hallelujah. We need to have history with the Lord. Uh, come on. Even history for God is medically proven. Uh, that's why they have what we call memory loss assistance uh, that go to these various uh, nursing homes. Uh, and their assignment is to basically speak to the individuals that are, that are suffering with memory loss. Uh, and their, their, their conversation, they bring up pictures. And what it is, it triggers moments in their mind uh, that brings them back to a happy place, uh, that brings them back to a place uh, of experience, that brings them back to a place where they remember the things that God did. They remember the things, hallelujah, that occurred in their life that triggered, oh yes, a transformation or, or growth or, or, or experience. Come on, we need to allow the voice of God to be our memory loss assistant in the name of Jesus, that the voice of the Lord, oh God, confirms our, our, hallelujah, it confirms our history in the name of Jesus. Come on, I want to give you this. Hallelujah. The voice of God challenges our hearing and it challenges our obeying. If we look at John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. But I want to give you something else. We, we look at 1 Samuel chapter 15, 22. It says, and Samuel hath, Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Oh, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken to the fat of rams. Here it is. Here's prophet Samuel's on the scene. He's talking to Saul because Saul basically told him flat out to his face, listen, I did what God told me to do. You're not going to come on the sea and try to tell me that I didn't obey God because I did. And so the, the Samuel was trying to prove a point to him, letting him know that, listen, uh, 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 the Lord... He delights in burnt offerings, but in this particular instance, you did not hear. And because you did not hear properly, you did not obey. So we often overlook a portion of that scripture that says uh, to hearken better than the fat of rams. So it says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken is the fat of the rams. Okay, so the word hearken means to answer a knock at the door. So when somebody's knocking, when the Lord is knocking uh, by way of his voice, will you answer? And so Saul thought he could offer a sacrifice as a substitute for his disobedience. Uh, however, there is no skeleton key and you cannot jimmy the lock with God. Come on, to access who he is or his blessing. Obedience is the, uh, the key to unlocking the blessings of God. Obedience to the voice of God is key, it's key, it's key. Come on, in the name of Jesus, I want to read this to you. It says in Matthew chapter seven, he says, not only one who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father, he who is in heaven, he said, many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in 
your name? Have we driven out demons in your name? Have we done miracles in your name? And then I would declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence. You who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. Come on, I got something better for you. Let me give you the message version. Come on. He says, knowing the correct password, saying master, master, isn't going to get you anywhere with me. Oh, what is required is serious obedience, doing what my father wills. I can see it now at the final judgment. Thousands strutting up to me saying, Master, we preach the message. Come on, you got a good message. You're preaching real good. You, you prophesy, you cast out all those demons. That's real good. But he says, we bash demons. Our, our super spiritual projects had everyone talking. Come on, even your, your conference uh, uh, was the talk of the town. But what you meant, what he says here, he says that. Check this out. Do you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say you missed the boat. Hallelujah. All you did was use me to make yourself important. You don't impress me one bit. You are out of here. It sounds harsh, but let me tell you that we use grace. We use mercy and we use love as a, as a, a excuse to remain non-compliant. I said it. Come on. Hallelujah. We've used grace. We use the excuse of mercy and we excuse love to be still in non-compliance with God and grace, mercy, and love is not to excuse extend your time. Grace, mercy, and love is not to be extended because you don't feel like God. I don't feel like what you just told me to do don't make any sense because I don't feel like doing it. Do you know that certain words have time releases on them? And if you don't obey them, you are in direct disobedience and you delay what God has put in place. Come on. If it wasn't authorized by him, it doesn't need to be done. Come on. If it wasn't, if it's done without the consent of the Lord, it cannot be done. Come on. You need the voice of the Lord. You need to allow the voice of the Lord to correct your healing and to cause you to comply with his wills and his ways. Gone are the days when you, when you allowed your past to be your hindrance. Come on. Come on. I'm, come, come on. Get up out of Lola Bar. Get out of your past. Get out of your hurt. Get out of your rejection. Come on. There is a time and a season now and the hour is now. Come on, what voice of the Lord is speaking and he wants to use you. Come on, in the name of you, you can no longer take the gospel oh, and use it as entrepreneurship. Oh, come on. We've been taking the gospel and we've been using it to promote our businesses and ourselves. Come on. The gospel is not a means of entrepreneurship. We cannot treat it like a career or a work first. Come on. It is a sacred message to a dying world who is desperate to hear the message of the father. Come on. Oh, the gospel is not your job. The gospel is not your career. Come on. It is a sacred message for a dying world. Come on, you it's no longer the days when you preach or without fruit and you give advice and void of a revelation. Your relevance doesn't matter. Y'all, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come on. I'm on the last thing. I'm about to wrap up. Come on, I got like three minutes. Come on, saints. Hallelujah. The voice of God, it grants you access. What do I mean by this? Is that there are doors, there are windows, and there are gates to connect heaven to earth. And he needs people, hallelujah, to communicate the things of heaven into the earth realm. This gives us access to the general will of God. We need the general will, and then we need the specific will of God. We need the general things that concern God, and then God is going to give us specific things dealing with what his heart is carrying. I'll prove it to you. Come on, what I mean by doors, windows, and gates, these are access points. If you study the scriptures, you'll see even in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, where he says, behold, I stand at the door. Come on, I'm knocking. I continue a lock. And what does he say? He says, if anyone hears my voice, Oh, and they open the door. Come on. Some of us here, but we won't open the door. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Uh, I want you to type in the comments, open the door. Hallelujah. He says, many are here, my voice and open the door. And, they, and he says, if, if you hear my voice and you open the door, access point, I will come in and eat with you. And he with me. This is a sign of communion with the father and communion opens up information, revelation, 
an insight into what that specifics. Come on, you can't get specifics by praying those hudiku prayers, those same kind of that same level of prayer that you've been on for the last 30 years. You need to allow the Lord to really baptize you with fire. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on. I'll give you another example. And when I talk about windows, we often use this passage of scripture as it relates to offering. And we come from Malachi chapter three, verse 10. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me in this. Say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows, windows of heaven and pour you out what a blessing until there is no raw room to receive it. Uh, there is a powerful thing in this uh, this chapter, in this pastor's scripture, because it reveals the importance of access. Hallelujah. And that the windows of heaven are designed to pour out uh, insight, designed to, come on, blessing ain't just houses, cars, and money. Come on, we got to get tired of, and sick and tired of hearing that message. Come on, give me insight and revelation for my family. Give me insight and revelation to make an impact in my community. Give me insight and revelation on how to start this business. Give me insight and revelation. Come on, hallelujah, on what to pray. Come on, give me strategy, blueprints, information that will bring about transformation through the kingdom message of the Lord. Come on, them the kind of prayers you need to pray. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, listen, I'm done. I want to wrap up. Hallelujah. Come on, we need the voice of God. I hope you've gotten, hallelujah, an understanding and a, 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 a strong level of impartation as it relates to the importance that the voice of God is everything. Come on, I want you right where you are in the name of Jesus, even as you type in the comments and as you are responding, I want you to begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for the word of your Lord, for oh Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for your preach word. We thank you for your rhema. We thank you for your logos. In the name of Jesus, that is coming upon your people. In the name of Jesus, Father, we prophesy now in the atmosphere, and we declare the word of the Lord even now over your sons and your daughters tonight. Father, we thank you that you have revealed the truth of your word unto us, and we thank you that even in this hour, you are making a separation between those who know you. And even those that you who know you not, Father, we think that you are separating the wheat from the tear. Oh, yes, God, you are separating the sheep from the goat and even from the wolves in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you even right now that according to Psalms chapter 90, chapter 50, verse 1. Oh, Father, we thank you that the mighty one, God, the Lord, he speaks and he summons the earth from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Come on. In the name of Jesus, your voice speaks. It summons us. It summons the inhabitants of the earth from the rising of the sun to the setting of the saint. We, O oh, Father, decree and declare that there is a people that will hear and there is a people that will obey the voice of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus, we decree it now. Let there be a sensitivity of the voice of God. Even in the days, even in the weeks and the months to come, we decree that sensitivity. Come on, we prophesy sensitivity comes upon the lives of your people now. In Jesus' name, Father, we dethrone Come on. Yes, Lord, we dethrone idols of self-will. Oh, impure motives. In the name of Jesus, we command spiritual deafness. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, to come out of your people now as a oh, spiritual deafness that as a result of rebellion, as a result of idolatry, as a, as a result of self-will, we command you to vacate us now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we release the power and the fire of God to come and to consume everything that causes us to be in rebellion. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come now repenting. We come now crying out to you. We come now desperate, oh, desperation and hunger and thirst. In the name of Jesus, Father, your word declares that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and then I will hear the land. In the name of Jesus, come on, saints, pray. I want you to pray and comment, pray and comment. In the name of Jesus, Father, we declare 
pray by the power of your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Oh, God, that you are washing us. You are purging us, God, of every form of resistance. Oh, Lord, God, that will keep us from abandoning your word, that will keep us from hearing your word, that will keep us not from releasing your word. And oh, God, that will keep us from obeying your word. In the name of Jesus, we decree that you are a voice to us. Come on. Oh, God, begin to type that in the comments. You are a voice to us. We will be a voice to the people. We will be a voice to your church. Hear God, Holy Spirit. Let your voice be clear. Let your voice be direct. In the name of Jesus, Father, according to John chapter 8, verse 47. Father, you said that he that is, is of God heareth God's word, and ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. We decree that we are a people that hear because we have an origin in you. Our foundation is in you. In the name of Jesus, we prophesy that our faith in him, that our profession of him and our authority comes from him. In the name of Jesus, confirms our legitimacy in you. And that confirms, oh God, oh, that we are part of the sheepfold. We decree that we are led of the Spirit of God, and that God, because we are led of the Spirit of God, that it causes us to be sons of God. For your word declares in Romans 8 14, for all those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. We decree that your words, that your voice are bread from heaven that gives life to this world. In the name of Jesus, come on, we declare that according to John chapter 6, verse 33. We prophesy John 6 33 that your word, that your voice, is the bread of heaven that gives life to this world, that gives life to this nation, that gives life, God. In the name of Jesus, we decree that we are a people that are blessed because we hear and we keep your word. Father, we thank you that our ears shall hear the word that is behind us, according to Isaiah 30. And Father, that word, that voice will begin to say that this is the way and that we ought to walk in it and that, God, we will know when to turn right and we will know when to turn left. We prophesy. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 in the name of Jesus therefore we thank you Lord that we will pay attention to what we have heard lest we drift away from it God we prophesy Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 come on saints pray in the name of Jesus we pray for closer attention we pray for undivided attention unto the Lord in the name of Jesus we don't want to drift away from your instructions we don't want to drift away from your ways we don't want to drift oh God from the leading of Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Father we pray that you oh God God, we shall walk after the Lord and we will fear him and we will keep his commandments. Come on prophesy that, that I will walk after the Lord, that I will walk after the Lord my God, that I will fear him and I will keep his commandments and I will obey. Come on, I'm going to walk. I'm going to fear. I'm going to keep, I'm going to obey the voice and I shall serve him and hold fast to him. Come on, that's Deuteronomy chapter 13. In the name of Jesus, Father, your word declares that he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to your ecclesia. Come on, in the name of Jesus, thinking that we have an ear and that we will hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. We will hear what the Spirit of the Lord releases. We will hear the voice of the Lord clearly, sound, precise in the name of Jesus. Let your prophets hear. Let your apostles hear. Let your pastors hear. Oh God, let your, oh God, evangelists hear. And even now, God, I prophesy that even now in the days to come, that there'll be an influx and a rise of teachers. Teachers, Father, in the name of Jesus, who will teach your people how to hear the voice of the Lord how to heed to the voice of the Lord in the name of Jesus may the teachers arise and oh I prophesy oh God in the name of Jesus if you know that you are a teacher come on I want you to lift your hands I prophesy that you would teach the instruction of the Lord I prophesy that you would not teach any other direction any other doctrine you would not preach heresy but you would teach the heart of the father in the name of Jesus now is the hour for teachers to arise to provide instruction that will equip that will prepare that will strengthen those to come even into the fall father we pray it now in the name of jesus hey come on in the name of jesus father we thank you right now for the power of your spirit that is among us for the power of your spirit that dwells in us father we don't want to be void of your voice we don't want to be void of your direction huh come on in the name of jesus come on some of you need to go back to the last word he gave you you abandon come on you abandon an altar that you were supposed to build come on he's trying to get out of you come on an establishment of history come on 
in the name of go back to the place go back to the last direction you keep jumping here and there trying to get it from all these virtual conferences and and and, and, and locations god saying i'm trying to teach you to hear my voice come on in the name of just no longer will we babysit a body of christ no longer will we babysit a community of believers it's time to mature up in our faith and rise up out of that those th those places those places that keep us from accessing the true nature of who we are and and walking into the things that God has declared over us. Come on, I decree that the word of the Lord is over your life. Hallelujah. We decree that the power of the Lord reigns, rules, and abides over you, that you will heed to the direction that you receive. You will heed to the voice of the Lord. You will heed, not because we taught you about it tonight, but because that is your heart's desire. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for each and every person on this line and even the visionary prophetess Sylvia. Father, we declare the blessing of the Lord come upon her in the name of Jesus for launching such an amazing initiative so that people can come to know the true nature of who you are. Father, we thank you and we praise you for these things. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Prophet Sylvia, I'm done. I ain't got no more voice. <laughs> Blessings to you all. Blessings to you all, each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woman of God, we, uh, can you lead us in worship? Praise God. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. Give us a song. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, man. Come on. Just wherever you are. And just lift your hands. And uh, Father, we thank you. Father, I begin to sing this song over your people. That there's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. For we tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where our heart becomes free and our shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, oh Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood our place and fill the atmosphere, Lord, your glory. Glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Lord, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your, your goodness, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence, God. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Come on, that's my prayer for you, that you will experience the glory of his goodness and that you will become more aware of who he is and what awareness requires intimacy requires coming unto the lord with communion don't just come to worship but come to commune with him sup with him allow him to speak and you receive that which he speaks unto you so that you can take what you have received and do that is my prayer is that you become more aware of God, that our awareness of him, that our sensitivity of him comes by way of intimacy. You're not going to get it anywhere else. You can try to get it anywhere else. You can try to get it from any other preacher, but you're not going to give it because the door to God is by way of Jesus and Holy Spirit. You're not going to be able to do it. You can't do it void of him. You got to do it with him. 
So blessings to all of you in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen to God be the glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, if I will, we bring all of our speakers back. Amen. To God be the glory. Oh, bless his holy name. People of God, come on and lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For truly, truly, truly. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord has spoken. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Truly, truly, truly. Our hearts should be burning within. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And and I know that you should be filled with the word of God. You should leave tonight, hallelujah, with a greater dimension of knowing God's voice, hallelujah, in another realm. To God be the glory. I have literally right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've been blessed. I've been blessed and I bless. Glory to God. And as I was sitting here, I said, Holy Spirit. I say glory to God. He exceeds our expectations. Hallelujah. He does, he does far exceedingly abundantly above. Amen. All that we can ask or think. So we each conference. Amen. God. He has exceeded my expectation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. No wonder. Amen. And we are. I knew there was a rhyme of word that God had birthed in these women of God. And I want to thank you, Prophetess Tabitha. God bless you. Amen. For joining tonight. God bless you, Prophetess Rika. And blessings to Oda. Amen. Tori. God bless you, women of God. I couldn't have done it without you all. Thank you for your sacrifice of time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I want to say before we leave on tonight, in Jesus' name, I just want to pray to in the event you have been glory to God, realize that you haven't been hearing God's voice the way that you sh should be hearing him because you have not put in time how you hear his voice. Glory to God. By studying and through praying and through fasting. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Sometime we begin. I was speaking earlier today. Sometime we look for our voice to be validated by so many people, whether it's in ministry, whether in leaders, glory to God, influential leaders. But God wants us to know his voice personally, intimately. In Jesus' name. So I'm going to just lead us in a repentant prayer and then we're going to move on on tonight. So if you can amen, repeat to me, I confess my sins in Jesus' name. God, tonight I'll confess my sins and my I confess that I have a man sinned before. I confess that you died and that you rose on the third day with all power. I receive you as Savior and Redeemer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I take up you by spirit and I will walk by faith. Amen. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pardon me in my sin. Hallelujah. In Jesus, my name, wash me and cleanse me through the blood of Jesus. And I receive you today as Savior and Lord. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you have repeated the sinner's prayer after me, Welcome to the sheepfold of the Lord Jesus Christ. I would encourage you to connect with the nearest church next to you. Glory to God, man. Stay in the word and be strengthened in the word. And the word is whereby, thereby, how we grow. In Jesus' name, we're cultivated through the word of God. And we're washed by his word. In Jesus' mighty name. So get ready, amen, to turn it over. Amen, so the women of God can share, uh, connect with you, share with you how you can connect. I'm going to turn it over. Over to Prophetess Tabitha, if you would like to speak, woman of God, just to share with the listeners tonight how they view your website in Jesus' name or any programs that you may have at this time. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory Thank you, God. Jesus. Thank you so much, Prophetess Sylvia. Prophet Rika, that was fire. Sylvia, you're welcome. Fire. <laughs> Whew. Ah, yes, God. You can reach me at magneticwomancoaching.com and regroup. <laughs> I done found a song. I was playing. I was going to take it off mute. I said, I'm going to help my sister out. I'm going to do the background vocals. <laughs> my sister, poor, is 
out and I thank God for it. Thank you, Jesus, because, you know, Jesus. one of the things, I, I, Prophet Sylvia, I just, I honor you so much. You know that already. But I just want to say this, you know, one of the first times that I had a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with Prophet Sylvia, I, it was, it was like a big sister just stepped on the scene and, and she poured into me and I will never forget that our conversation, it was probably an hour and a half, we was talking, <laughs> but she poured into me and she left such a lasting impression. And she said to me, Tabitha, the gift is all over you. She I was already walking in my calling, but she made it very plain when she said, Tabitha, some things are caught and some things are taught. Teach to be taught. And I said, wow. And I, I, I thought, Lord, I know I'm a teacher. I know I'm a teacher. And so I've got a class coming up, y'all, on just this topic. Now, Prophet Sylvia didn't know about that class on hearing God's voice. But see, I gave y'all the, the, the Cliff Notes version of the course because I already had it. I was already birthing that thing. See, I was like, okay, Lord, because he started talking to me about this about 90 days ago. And I was like, and so when she inboxed me, I was like, what you told her? Look. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you told her what we'd be talking about. So it was right on the money. If you guys are interested in taking that class, please reach out to me. Um, it's going to be good. It's going to be a five-week course where we're going to go into the deep parts of hearing God's voice. And, and, and there's many steps to it, but you'll come out with a Amen. clear understanding and some Holy Ghost Q-tips because we're going to remove some wax in the name of Jesus. We're going to move some, remove some blockages yes. in your spirit so that you can hear the Amen. voice of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. For sharing to God be the glory. Prophet Rika, if you can share with the people, amen, how they can further connect with you. Also, YouTube, I'm showing the show for you in Jesus name. Amen. And your website. Let us know if you have any, of any upcoming, amen, engagement or uh, however, amen. Please share with the people at this time. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you once again, our Prophet you for the opportunity. And um, I, I really am greatly appreciate <laughs> greatly appreciate it. So um, to, to reach me, um, you can pretty much find me, uh, Rika Riley, R-I-C-K-A, uh, Riley, R-I-L-E-Y. Um, you can find me, um, and I go pretty much utilize my Rika Riley personal page, but you can also connect with me on Rika Riley Ministries uh, Facebook page, as well as uh, my YouTube channel. And um, I'm also on Instagram. Um, under the Instagram name, uh, Rika, that's me, R-I-C-K-A-T-H-A-T-S-M-E. So um, I have a couple other uh, projects that I am working on, some uh, more prophetic, uh, spontaneous music that is coming. Um, so if you if you don't know, um, I did uh, release a project with um, a fellow uh, prophetic minstrel of mine, uh, Joseph Garner, he's an amazing brother to me. We just released a prophetic, spontaneous um, EP um, on Thanksgiving. Um, so that's out on Amazon. It's called Illustration. Um, so you'll see it. it's a red cover with uh, um, white letters. And it, um, it's the kind of music that um, don't listen to in your car. <laughs> you might want to consider it. <laughs> Um, but illustrations basically talks about the different <laughs> elements of our God. So the heart of God, the fire of God, um, the 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 fire. weight of the Holy Spirit, and um, just his his in flooding presence. So um, that album is currently out on Amazon, and I have a couple of book projects um, that I'm still working on. I'll be releasing another one um, this coming year um, for leaders. Um, and then um, if you guys are tuning in tomorrow night, me and my bro actually will be doing a live prophetic spontaneous flow. So uh, <laughs> we'll be live on our, our pages, uh, Rika Riley and uh, Joseph. So. Amen. 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 Please connect. Um, praise God. Connect with these powerful women of God. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you. Lord. God has just been such an honor and a blessing uh, to connect with them uh, via, amen, on um, virtual Facebook.
uh, platforms for such a time as this. Um, glory to God. I love prayer. Have been um, with Prophet Rika. Amen. And she was praying and in the season. I was just drawn in in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. But of course, my name is Shibby Castillo. I'm the cultivator in Jesus' name. The Lord called me to social media about but three, four years ago and said, cultivate my people, one plant, one water, and I'll give the increase. And amen to God be the glory. The Holy Spirit says, sit, I'm the teacher and I'm going to be taught. So I open my mouth. He glory to God. Amen. I'm the author of the book, Heavenly Encounters. Glory to God. Amen. And I'm also, amen, a coach, a mentor in Jesus name. Amen. Also, I'm a dream of the Lord, the gift of interpretation. And so God has blessed me, amen, to, to help come to grace this platform, to help his people, to hear and visions in Jesus my name. Thank God, because people, the Holy Spirit spoke you all name. Amen. When I host a conference, I, I wait to see what he says and who he wants. And he just tell me to open the platform. And I said, it belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So he said, the voice of God is everything. And truly in this hour, people of God, we're going to we're hearing so many things. But we must not be distracted. But we must have the spirit of discernment to know what he's saying. So these women of God came. And also, too, I want to thank uh, prophetess, amen, uh, to Tori Munson, amen, uh, to God be the glory. She's messaging me, so she says she thanks. God for each and every one. Oh, you can connect with uh, Elder Tori at um, Tori Munson Ministries and amen. Her uh, website is Ministries. Amen. Glory to God. Also, you can connect with me at cultivatingcoach.com. Once again, we love you and we salute you in the mighty name of Jesus. Prophet Rika, you had any final amen that you wanted to say? Anything else on your heart? No, it's Hallelujah. Just I right, bless you and uh, honor to meet you, Miss Tabitha. So, blessings to you. We will connect. Yes. You know, I just want to say this: if yes. any of you are on Clubhouse, I have a room called the Magnetic Woman, and so Prophetess Rika, I will be honored to do a room with you, so we can go into some of these realms. Prophetess Sylvia, I don't know if you're yes. in there, but I would love to have this conversation in the room where we, I, you know, my my heart is for women. And so I yes. start talking about some of these issues. And next week I'm talking about daddy issues. And so we're going into yeah. some some deeper depths. Okay. So, yes. sure. Absolutely. So, amen. Definitely put it in the chat for us as well. Um, your, um, so how they can connect with you. Amen. On that platform as well. I'm on that platform clubhouse as well. And the Sylvia Casillo. Amen. So definitely follow us. Prophetess Rika, thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Please pride me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Sometimes I've been praying and coming and ministering so much. Amen. I'm a little hoarse, but to God be the glory. But I was just so stirred up with this word tonight. So sometimes, please pardon me. I get like that. I'm trying to stay with what I'm trying to say, but I'm a little stirred up. So I have to kind of remain. Amen. <laughs> Lord to God, I'm telling you, people, God, you all came and preached the gospel tonight. Man, thank you, Lord God. I'm over here saying hallelujah. And somebody in the back, they agree with me. They say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. One of my twins say hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> thank you, God. I'm on preaching. Amen, Rico. I, uh, Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Prophet is Tabitha, once again, God bless you. Amen. Facebook, we thank you so kindly. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for working with us through the challenges. Amen. We had some technical difficulties in the beginning, but yet, amen, God had his way. Thank you for standing here and pressing in with us. God bless you. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you. May you come back, hear the replay, take some notes and share it all over on in your platforms. Amen. And Gina, we thank you so kindly. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. We salute you in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Once again, Prophetess Rika, Prophetess Tabitha, and Elder Tori, thank you so much for joining the virtual conference. The voice of God is everything. And I'm with you from here. I know you're not going to rest. Third, I'm telling you, I can feel it up in you. Third, how do you look at it? And amen and amen. Oh, can amen. The Holy Spirit, I hear you. Hallelujah. People of God, stay with me. Stay with me. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Pardon me. The Holy Spirit is saying, put your cash apps up for me. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Three, you th um, put your um, prophetess Tabitha, prophetess Rika. If you all can go in the chat, put your cash apps for me. Hallelujah. And people of God on tonight, I pray and I ask you, hallelujah, to bless these women of God as the Lord leads. Hallelujah. Bless them as the Lord leads you. Hallelujah. Because truly, 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 they poured out from their souls on tonight. Hallelujah, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. They poured out from their souls on tonight. So we thank you so kindly in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. So put those cash apps up in Jesus' mighty name once again for Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Guess what? Your giving will not be in vain. Hallelujah. I believe their ministries are good ground. Amen. And you you shall see a fruit. Amen, God. Amen. Many of them hence, you will see the fruits of God. In Jesus' name, that it'll come back to you as a harvest. In Jesus' name, it is so. Peace and blessings, women of God. Have a mighty night. Amen. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace and blessings. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God.